is Sarnia Lampton Daily for Monday, April 20th. Good evening, I'm Terry Doyle. Lampton Public Health is looking to speak to anyone who used a local taxi service recently. Riders who used Greg's taxi on April 1st, 3rd, 6th, 7th, 8th or 10th are asked to contact Public Health. This is after a driver for the company has tested positive for COVID-19. Lampton Medical Officer of Health Dr. City Ranaday gives us an update on the situation. As people call in, we'll, we'll tell them what to do, do a little risk assessment and then give them some next steps based on when they were exposed and what the duration of exposure may have been. We know that there is a variable ratio of taxi drivers to cars given any taxi company. Um, and so sometimes you have uh, one driver who might drive multiple cars or one car that might be driven by multiple drivers. And so um, we're really focused on making sure that we can understand whether or not people who were in the in, um, in the cars were exposed. Uh, does that help answer your question? The death toll due to COVID-19 in the region has increased to 14. A person in their 60s passed away over the last 24 hours due to the virus. The death is not related to outbreaks at a pair of local seniors residences. Overall, 13 new positive cases were announced this morning, bringing the total to 145. Elsewhere tonight, Sarnia City Council met this morning. The virtual meeting allowed City Council to take care of some urgent matters. Things got heated when Councillor Nathan Calhoun questioned the restrictions put in place by the primary control group during the state of emergency and wanted some measures changed. Trust between the City of Sarnia and the citizens of Sarnia is what is going to be either strained or strengthened because of this pandemic. Excessively cautious and fearful leadership and policies are revealing unfortunate realities at where this trust is at. I think there is still time to restore this trust and start implementing our policies in such a way that still encourage safe behavior trusting that the majority of people are being cautious and inviting the citizens of Sarnia to being safe from a position of working together and not forcing something onto them. Mayor Mike Bradley was quick to respond, defending the work of the primary control group over the past 40 days, looking to keep the public safe. We are under a state of emergency, the city of Sarnia. The province of Ontario is under a state of emergency. And we're doing what we can in the areas that we have control. And by the way, we don't control the beaches. That was a provincial order, just as it was with the park amenities. And we don't control what stores are open or not. We're trying to do what we can. If people have a choice. They can either distance six feet or they can be six feet under. And it's easy to, to play to the crowd. It's easy to play to the mob and say, well, they shouldn't have done that. But we're trying to protect people. Go over to Landmark Village. Go over to Landmark, Landmark Village and try to truly understand what's happened to people. And the people that are still struggling with the illness there. So are we perfect? No. But we're making decisions every day because we care about the people in this community and we're trying to protect them. Meantime, City Council did approve measures to help the city save money during the pandemic to help offset an expected loss of revenue. Let's go to Sarnia City Hall now. We're joined by CAO Chris Carter. And Chris, can you give us a, a clarification, a breakdown of what uh, Council passed today when it comes to the uh, efficiencies and looking at some ways to uh, save on expenditures right now, especially with the pandemic going on? Yes, um, Mayor and members of council today uh, approved a, we would call it a, a mitigation plan. Uh, it's really our first plan um, to try and combat some of the unforeseen expenses and also um, some of the, the long-term planning and financial planning that we'd like to do during this uh, unfortunate time. Uh, within the, the report, we identified um, up until about approximately May 31st, there was uh, $700,000 of unforeseen uh, expenses or lost revenues, uh, we've decided to move forward and make a recommendation where we would not be hiring any new um, personnel or hiring any summer students or part-time staff um, until the foreseeable future um, or until things start to, uh, um, to I guess you'd say, go back to normal. Um, and at that point, we will reevaluate the, the personnel position. Uh, in addition to that, um, staff also recommended um, canceling and asking council to reconsider some of their capital projects and programs that they approved in the 2020 budget deliberation or during the budget deliberation, I should say. Um, these programs are canceled um, for now, but will be uh, repurposed uh, in the 2021 budget uh, process for further consideration. Our goal was to again, try and find um, some dollars uh, that would be available to help mitigate some of the losses uh, so that staff uh, and council can still continue on with their strategic plans 
and their uh, projects and not have to necessarily go into uh, special reserves uh, due to unforeseen uh, expenses. Uh, all the projects were, um, I guess you would say, cancelled and reconsidered except for one. Uh, the Gypsy Moth um, spraying program did stay within uh, the 2020 budget um, and that was a reconsideration uh, from Council and that was also approved by Council. All of the projects totaling approximately $1.8 million will be cancelled for this year and have available funds if necessary if necessary uh, to uh, fill in any mitigation gaps uh, due to this unforeseen uh, pandemic. And I guess at the end of the day, does this give the city a little more wiggle room, as you said, because not sure, you know, property taxes and people might have challenges or businesses with taxes in terms of revenues coming in. And then, as you said, maybe any unforeseen expenditures, expenditures that comes up. I've got to think this does give you at least some, we'll say, wiggle room right now. Correct. And, and again, every decision, uh, and I like to, you know, state this, uh, this comment, every decision that's made is, is a very difficult decision. Nobody has a crystal ball. Uh, nobody obviously can can see the future uh, in terms of where we're going to be, you know, two days from now, or even 30 days from now, or 60 days from now. Um, and if we look back uh, about 40 days uh, prior to where we were and where we are now, extremely different. Um, so what we're trying to do is just trying to be proactive, um, try to take the initiative to say, okay, what is our best case and worst case scenario, um, but also be very respectful. Uh, to uh, you know, to the the needs and the wants and the services that we still need to provide to all of our residents, and and have that understanding that these are difficult times. We're here to help. Um, we're going to try to make every uh, mean possible where we continue to assist the residents, um, but most importantly, to ensure that we're in a financial, in a proper financial uh, situation where we can continue on those great services uh, once we get out of this unfortunate uh, pandemic. This is a unique situation for everyone. As you talk to staff and, of course, working with council as well, is there a lot of juggling going on between, as you said, needs versus wants? If you look at uh, the services that are provided, and very good question, I might say, uh, the services that, that a government, a, a lower tier municipality, uh, such as you know, the city of Sarnia, the services we deliver are, are very uh, demanding. Uh, you look at the infrastructure that's involved in, in a city, you know, every time you you flush your toilet every time you turn on your your your, your tap every time you drive your car um on the on the roads um uh, there's, there's just you know all those recreational services all the parks that we have to maintain so um there is a huge demand um internally that uh, we have to fulfill every day um, now we're going to be short staff and we now have to juggle those resources as well uh, we are going to be working at working with um, our great staff and employees that we currently have to uh, pick up or to fill in some of those gaps uh, to ensure those services are going. Um, every day you're always juggling um, given the situation that we have or the situation that we're in right now. Um, but I do believe we're gonna be successful um, in the, the short term and also in the long term with uh, juggling the needs and the wants uh, while we continue to go on. Chris, in your last comment, you almost kind of went ahead where I was going next and tell me about the staff. You know, you see it obviously as a CAO, but the staff, whether the senior staff or even, uh, you know, regular staff working at various facilities and various departments, how everyone has come together during this. And I'm sure there's been a lot of flexibility and agility with everyone's work right now. Yeah, there's there's actually a multiple, multitude, sorry, of uh, people and groups um, that I'd like to recognize. First is the primary control group. Um, primary control group is, is made up of numerous people, uh, professionals, department heads, staff, um, and we've been having meetings every day for the past over 40 days, um, uh, every morning, 9 a.m., coming together, strategizing, figure out what uh, the next mandate's gonna be from the federal and provincial government and, and coming together and, and really utilizing each other's uh, resources. And that group's been very, very uh, successful and has also um, have put in a lot, a lot of work to ensure that obviously we're trying to keep people and the residents safe as possible. I also want to recognize um, my team. I'm only as good as my team. I'm just one body. I, I, you know, I do have a position within the organization, but overall, I'm only as good as my team. And my senior management team has been nothing but uh, fantastic as well. But it's also the frontline uh, staff too that I want to recognize. Uh, you know, with the firemen, uh, we have bylaw officers that are going out there every day. Uh, sometimes it's 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 never um, a popular uh, decision. Um, and then, and it's never a popular judgment um, from from some people. Um, however, they are constantly out there 
uh, frontline staff that are working extremely hard. And then we also have all of our other staff that are uh, making sure that, uh, you know, the roads are, are repaired, making sure that the parks are still open so people can go access them. All of our utilities and services that we provide on a day to day, the, the team, the staff, um, uh, just everyone together um, has really made this, um, this unique situation uh, very successful and they are hardworking and they have nothing but 100% um, support and passion for their job. And it's truly shining through this uh, unfortunate situation. And I do wanna recognize all of them uh, for all their hard work and dedication over the past uh, 40 to 45 days. And I know it's gonna be uh, even, even longer uh, in the future, so. You mentioned passion, and I know you've got senior staff there that have been with the city for a long time and people working in various facilities. And I guess, you know, as someone who is newer to this area, I've got to think over the past couple of years, that is, of course, you've seen, I'm sure that passion really come through over these past 40 days. It, it, it has, and I, I can't emphasize enough um, how great everyone's been. Um, everyone is 100% dedicated to their, to their task. Uh, and ultimately, our goal is to ensure or try to ensure that everyone um, is provided the necessary information, the necessary services to stay safe uh, at the end of the day, provide our services, educate and provide a safe community. Um, and everyone from top to bottom um, has done a fantastic job um, in relaying this and also uh, providing it through their, their hard work. And I would again like to thank everyone for their hard work. Before I let you go, I heard something out of one of the addresses in the States last night, but I thought it might sort of apply anywhere. That idea that maybe not right now because it's a lot of control, but as we move forward, the opportunities to grow and improve and thrive where maybe some surf certain services had to take a step back right now. And as they're reinstated, realize, hey, we could even do this better. And I'm not talking financial, but I'm sure there must be opportunities moving forward, not today here in on April 20th, but down the road to really look at things and say, hey, how can we make this even better for the citizens of Sarnia? Great question again, yes. And, and that's part of our, um, our, we call it the SMT team, senior management team. Um, and these are some of the takeaways that we're actually um, having from our primary control group meetings that we have in the morning. And then we come together um, as a senior management team and we try to uh, obviously find efficiencies and we try to find a better way of delivering services. and. And sometimes you, you can realize uh, that they could be increased um, based on demand and based on other services that might uh, might be required within the community that you never knew of uh, until this unfortunate situation. So there are definitely um, efficiencies that we are looking at. Uh, we meet as a senior management team at 10 a.m. right after the primary control group every day uh, and start strategizing in terms of what the next steps are going to be. And, and again, how do we increase efficiencies uh, within the corporation? So. Um, I do believe you're going to see some successful um, policies and procedures uh, coming forth out of this. Um, when that will happen, again, I don't have a crystal ball, um, but when it does get back to, I quote unquote, somewhat normal, um, some of those, as I said, policies and procedures will be uh, implemented and also uh, presented to council for consideration. Well, Chris, we know you're in and out of a lot of meetings with uh, various groups and uh, keeping uh, things running. We appreciate you giving us a few minutes here today. All the best. Stay safe and we'll catch up to you again soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. This is Chris Carter, the CAO of the City of Sarnia. Back with more Sarnia Lifton Daily in a moment here on your TV. Welcome back to Sarnia Lampton Daily here on your TV. Well, we know it is a stressful time for a lot of people, but there are ways people can reach out for help. Let's go to Donna Martin now from the Family Counseling Center who joins us. And Donna, we know that uh, your services have been vi busy, but we know there are certainly indeed services available. Give us an idea of services from the Family Counseling Center people can reach out to if they need to in this time. Okay, great. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, one of the challenges that I have been facing since I started working from home and the volunteers started working from home was getting the word out to the community that we are still offering services. So in terms of the Family Counseling Center, we are continuing to provide counseling services to our uh, employee assistance contract clients and individuals who are looking for some support out in the community as well. Now. We are hearing on the distress line people's frustration that everywhere they call they have to leave a message and it's the same with our agency if you if you're interested in getting some counseling call the family counseling center 519-336-0120 
leave a voicemail message with a clear num phone number for us to call back on. Um, and we'll get back to you as quickly as, our can as we can. Our intake workers are working really hard at getting back to people who are looking for counseling sessions. So just be patient with us. A lot of agencies are continuing to operate, but they're just doing it differently now. So we are getting back. Uh, um, and then the programs that I'm um, running are Distress Line and Telcheck. So if it's okay, I'll talk about the Distress Line first. Go for it. All righty. So the Distress Line is a program that's operated by volunteers. We're answering the calls 24-7. And we even have enough volunteers stepping up to provide the service so that if we do have somebody on a distress line call and a second call comes in, now we're able to um, answer that second call as well. So what we're hearing is people who are struggling with um, obviously the COVID-19, um, you know, with people who are already facing um, stressors and day-to-day -day challenges, having this pandemic around us is adding a lot of extra pressure. So there's lots of worry and fear and stress. And so that's compounding people's reactions. Um, so what can be really helpful is for them to call us and our volunteers are excellent listeners. We're not here to tell you what to do and how to do it. We're here to be that sounding board and to help you to navigate your way through whatever it is that you're experiencing. So I, again, our volunteers stepped right up. Um, I think I started working from home on March 20th and uh, pulled the volunteers out of the phone room. They were happy to do the work from home. And then I reached out to the United Way and let them know um, I knew right away that it was going to be too much for just me to handle. So they provided us with emergency funds. So I was able to hire a couple of volunteers to help me out with the scheduling and the volunteer support aspect of the work. And so thanks to the United Way, continue to donate to them through this crisis. Um, so the volunteers are there for you if you need a listening ear. And we'll talk to you about anything. Um, we've had a young person who tried to call the the kids help phone and couldn't get through so she reached out to us and um, was really struggling and we were able to help her to come up with her own um, kind of coping strategy so that was a, a great call we're getting some people who are in uh, family violence situations and are struggling being stuck at home with their abusive partners um, so lots of different types of calls. So give us a shout if you need to talk. Now there's so also the other, the other, I was gonna say, then there's the Telcheck program I do believe as well. Yeah, so the Telcheck program is also really important. So our volunteers are currently making calls to 96 seniors who are living in isolation in the community. And a lot of our seniors have complex health issues. Again, the United Way is supporting us to keep that program going. We are hearing from our clients that, um, you know, it's getting very stressful now. They've been stuck in the home for three, four weeks. So we can be that kind of ray of sunshine for them. We're giving them the opportunity to talk about COVID-19, talk about who they're worried about, what they're worried about, are they getting the help that they need in terms of grocery items? Are they getting their medications delivered? We can help support them through all that. Um, and then what we try and do is shift it from what's happening globally and locally, and then start talking about some positive things so that um, we can bring a ray of sunshine into their day and hopefully leave the call on a positive note for them. Don, on either of the programs, the Distress Line or the Telcheck, I've got to think the important factor for a lot of people is just having an ear at the other end of the line. Absolutely. They don't necessarily need us to say much at all. And we've already been getting that feedback. I don't know what I would do if you, you know, weren't here to take my call. I don't know what, well, a lot of our Telcheck clients call us their guardian angels. They look forward to our calls every day. And sometimes we talk about TV shows, cooking, you know, we'll ask about, you know, we'll share menus. What are you reading? So it's really about that kind of social connection that we're all missing right now. Do you find some of the calls and especially, I guess we're, you know, shifting to the distress line where it's, 
things that obviously has really you know caused a lot of stress whether it's job situation whether it's what's gone on with this with the pandemic you found that sort of really magnified issues for a lot of people yes we're hearing about all of that relationships you know so um, people who are dating and they can't go and be with their partner or they can't be with their family they're worried about finances so our volunteers do a really good job to stay up on the services that are still available websites that they can go to um, where to get um, you know how to get groceries those kinds of things to help ease those stresses because um, I think once people realize that there is help out there they're are those people that will just sit and listen to their worries, then that helps reduces to reduce their stress. And we also talk about healthy coping strategies. So what can you do for yourself today to feel better? And even if it the answer is nothing, just sit and relax um, or read a book or sometimes they color or knit, you know, anything like that, that helps to distract them and reduce the stress is so helpful for them. Tell me about the agility that the staff and volunteers have had to have through this where, as you said, the change from in an office environment to being at home, but then also, as you said, staying up on a lot of things where before there was sort of a similar playbook, I'll say, to move from versus yeah. now every day there are new things coming out. Yes, exactly. So um, we use a database that has enabled us um, to have our volunteers working from home in the past. And so typically we would use that if there were bad weather, road conditions, bad weather, so I could keep the volunteers at home. So for the most part, they're, they're fairly comfortable working um, that, you know, from their homes. They have a private space um, to make sure that nobody can overhear the calls. You know, we take care of all the confidentiality issues. And then the staying up on things. So when I, when the United Way provided us additional funding so that I could hire a couple of my volunteers to help with some of the scheduling and other um, time consuming things that I take care of on a day to day basis, that gave me the opportunity and the time to stay up on those, like you said, the day to day changes. So um, that's where a lot of my uh, focus and energy is going. So between staying up on what's happening and supporting the volunteers, that's, that's my job these days. Donna, for people watching us right now and maybe do need a little help, need an ear, how do they reach out to you? Great question. Okay, so if you want to call the distress line, 519-336-3000, 24-7. We're doing our best to manage every call that comes in. If you would like to become a Telcheck client and receive a lovely phone call from our volunteers. And it can be every day, morning, um, once a day, either the morning, afternoon, or evening, or a few times a week, then call the Family Counseling Center. So it's 519-336-0120. And if you know of somebody that might benefit from the program, give us a shout. So just leave us name and phone number and then I'll follow up as quickly as I can. The intake is seamless. We could be talking. I could set you up on Telcheck right now and you could be getting your first call this evening. It's quick and easy. There's no cost. It's funded by the Ministry of Health and the United Way of Sarnia Lambton. Well, Donna, I'm glad we were able to touch base and uh, certainly we've put, flashed those numbers up on screen as well for people that are interested great. or check out the Family Counseling Center website as well for more information. Donna, we appreciate Thanks. you joining us. Some great work by you, your staff and volunteers. Stay safe and we'll talk soon. Thanks, you as well. Take care. There's, Bye now. There's Donna Martin from the Family Counseling Center joining us. More to come on Sarnia Lampton Daily on your TV. That will do it for our show tonight. We're here with you every weeknight during the pandemic and this state of emergency with updates from around Sarnia Lampton. That'll do it for tonight though. I'm Terry Doyle. We will see you tomorrow.